Hello, everyone. I'm Melissa from Gilda's Club Grand Rapids. I hope that we find you well today and staying safe and enjoying this absolutely beautiful fall day. You know, I always have to mention the weather. And I do want to mention that my tree out front, we have a silver maple, has finally turned gold. And it is fabulous. It is so gorgeous. And um, so I have with me today a coworker, and I'm so excited to be together with you, Miss Tracy. We have Tracy Whiting. She's Hi. our program staff. Hi, Tracy. And she also is our minority program coordinator. So it's really good to have you, Tracy. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah. So um, if you're new to this Facebook Live program and you enjoy what you're seeing, please like our post or share it with somebody. It, we will have it recorded and it will be posted here, posted in our website and posted on our YouTube page. So you can access it in many different ways. If you're new to Gilda's Club, and this is the first time that you've seen anything that Gilda's Club has done, we are a free cancer and grief support community right here in the Grand Rapids area. We have a virtual and an in-person program, and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. But if you'd like to connect with us, you can call us at 453 8300 or look on our website, gildasclubgr.org. There's lots of information about what we do and how we um, work as a community. And we would love to talk with you and get you connected. Yes. So today we are honoring that it is National Children's Grief Awareness Month. So Tracy and I both work with teens, tweens, mm -hmm. and young children at Gilda's Club that have grief, don't we, Tracy? Yes, we yes. do. Yeah. And it is such an honor to do so. Yes, it is. I absolutely agree. And um, I know that this is just one month that we're celebrating or honoring the awareness of this, but do you think grief stops in one month, Tracy? Oh, absolutely not. Grief is a 12 month a year um, event uh, situation. And unfortunately um, it is unfortunate, but fortunately we provide emotional support. I agree. And so it's a both and, isn't it? I love that you said that. Yeah, it's, um, it's really a time of great sadness um, and mixed with many, many emotions mm -hmm. and children trying to organize themselves around those big adult emotions sometimes, um, trying to figure all of that out and their families as well. And, um, and then it is a great opportunity to create community and to be a part of a community and to lean into that support. So we're going to talk a bit about that more later, and um, but we have this incredible book we're going to read, and then we have a little bit of a craft, and um, so we should probably get started with that. What do you think, Tracy? I think you're right, Melissa. <laughs> so we have this great book called The End of Something Wonderful, A Practical Guide for Backyard Funeral by Stephanie Lucia Novick. I love the drawings in this too, and the humor. It's got a good, good amount of humor. First, you need something dead, meaning something that was once alive, but isn't any longer. You can see that the, there's four different pictures here and each person has something and they look a little bit sad there. Mm -hmm. um, your something dead will most likely be something wonderful. You loved very much as a pet, like a guinea pig, fish, or, oh, sorry, or a fish, or perhaps a pill bug. If your something dead didn't leave instructions, it is safe to assume they will be okay with whatever kind of backyard funeral you plan. 
because even dead, they know how much you miss them and how much you want to be able to explain that to everyone. But the sort of explaining can be hard. Having a backyard funeral helps when you can't find when you can't find all the words. You see, they have all of these words up there. So, yeah. Yeah. And then what does it say in the little gray? Can you see the gray? The words are kind of small on this. Yeah. Can you see that? Um, oh, I think it's... they get stuck on their way out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I find that often. Don't you find that often when I get choked up? Yes. Yes. That my brain wants to say something and it kind of gets stuck right in the yes. middle because tears kind of get in the way. Yes. To start, it's good to put your something dead in a box. Pretty much any old box will do, but avoid litter boxes. Ew, they're too stinky. A jack in the box, they're too springy. Bread boxes, too crumbly. Plus your adult probably really wouldn't like you taking the bread box out of the kitchen. A shoe box is usually the best choice of all. Yes. If you want to add things to the box to keep your something dead company, that would be fine. A guinea pig might like an orange nub of carrot. A fish might appreciate a few drops of water. A pill bug might be grateful for a smooth rock cool in your hand. Hmm. Oh, and the last one, she's trying to put that skateboard in there. She must have skateboarded with her guinea pig or not. I don't, I don't know what she has in there. Was that her turtle? You will also need a hole. Having lived full but small lives, a guinea pig, fish, or bug generally don't need a very large hole. And now if you have a funeral for something really big, like a hippopotamus or a narwhal, you will have to get permission from the city to dig a very deep hole. That's also true. And I think sometimes even a dog, yes. a warning. Don't get excited and try something that isn't dead. Not only is it rude, but it's also annoying when something dead walks away from your backyard funeral before your backyard funeral is over. I love the little pile of dirt on the cat's back. Being being a being nautical. a nautical origin, a fish might appreciate burial at sea. If there's no sea nearby, the toilet is just as nice. <laughs> it is considered respectful to salute and say something in fish language as you flush. Do you want to read those? I can can't you? see it. Yeah, it's hard to see. So. I think it says roughly translated, blurb, blub, glub, means <laughs> we submit fish lady or fish body to the deep. We've had many a funeral in our bathroom. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> you will want to tell stories about your something dead at your backyard funeral. You can talk about what they did and how lovely they were and how sad you are thinking about all the things you shared together. An example is, here lies Bugwort Z. Wamperjawed. He enjoyed long walks on the sidewalk, crawling up blades of grass and avoiding birds. His life's ambition was to travel all the way to the other side of the garden. He was a good bug and I will miss him on the, on the screen door. You could also explain how being dead won't ever change 
and how much you love won't ever change how much you love them. But if you don't feel like saying it out loud, it's perfectly okay to hug that thought inside your heart too. Yes. I love that saying, hug that heart, yes. or that thought inside your heart. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. Funerals almost always involve the singing of songs. Some songs can make you cry, which people do at funerals. Some songs can make you laugh, which people also do at funerals. Sometimes people laugh and cry at funerals because that can happen too, even without songs. If you do cry at your backyard funeral, have tissues handy. They are almost always better for wiping tears and a runny nose than a sleeve. A promise. Crying because of how much you love your something wonderful before it became something dead is not bad or embarrassing at a backyard funeral or at any other time. In fact, crying can often make you feel a little better, even if it might not seem like it at the time. Yeah. That's so true, Melissa. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Crying helps relieve some of those emotions because we can cry when we're happy and when we're sad. Yeah. And it, it helps us then to um, be more balanced afterward. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it's okay. We want to give everyone permission. It is okay Absolutely. to cry. Yeah. It's necessary. Yes. When your something dead is in the box, and when the stories have been told, and the songs sung, and the tears cried, you can cover up the hole and bring on the flowers. No one knows why flowers are good at funerals other than almost everyone enjoys flowers at some point in their life. So they would probably enjoy them afterward too. Don't dig up your something dead just to see how things are going. Like Mabel across the street did that one time because when, because when something is dead, it isn't going anywhere. Anything dead prefers all, in all cases to be less, left peacefully alone. Yes. In fact, RIP on a tombstone actually means rest in peace. If you are supposed to dig up something dead, the tombstone would say, rest until someone wants to see how things are going. <laughs> and R-U-S-W-T-S-H-T-A-G doesn't really fit nicely. <laughs> One of those humor moments I love. <laughs> yes. It's hard to know how to end a backyard funeral, because even when it's all over, it might feel like it isn't. And maybe it isn't. You see, if possible, you still aren't all the way ready to say goodbye to your something wonderful. That is how your something did. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you want to curl up close to where you buried your something dead and have chats every so often. Maybe you want to read your new library book on mummies or tell them about the third grader who threw up at the drinking fountain and clogged it. That's pretty gross. But <laughs> you know, I do, I want to say here is that um, I often go and visit my parents' grave. Mm -hmm. Do you visit a grave site ever? I don't because I'm not in the same state, but I have a box of treasures that I keep. Yeah, okay. It allows me to be very connected. Nice. Yeah, I have often, in fact, on my mother's birthday, we went to her grave. We planted flowers and we sang her happy birthday. 
okay. Yeah, and so visiting those grave sites are really important. It's an important ritual, and if it helps you feel better, I think it's great. I think so too, Melissa. Yeah. Maybe you just want to sit with all your something dead and just be quiet for a while, which is okay. Whenever you want to do this, it is just fine. Funerals come at the end of something wonderful. Just remember, it's not the end of everything. You can always begin something wonderful again. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to say, um, I think that's the end of the book, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay. That, that, that piece that you said that you're not in the same state as maybe where your um, something wonderfuls are buried. Mm -hmm. And, but that you can always find a place here, wherever you're living. Um, if you've moved cities or if you've moved to the, across town and you can't get to that other place, you can create a space somewhere outside that is in honor of that. Yeah, um, that site and and go there and visit still um, so that you're able to um, feel like you're doing that, you know, and then this other thing that we're going to talk about in a minute. <laughs> so that's great. I'm really glad you brought that up because I know that you're not the only person who has moved away from mm -hmm where there's something wonderful is our, our buried. People often move homes and so they can't really go to the, if the house is sold, they can't really go back to their old house and say, mm -hmm. excuse me, can I hang out in your backyard for a while, right? right. Yeah. But something yes. wonderful lives inside my heart. Yes. yes. Yeah. There's that hug, right? Yes. Oh, I love that. So, um, you know, this brings up so many conversations um, and so many thoughts for me, like, what do you think? Do you think we should let children participate in human something wonderful's funeral? Funerals? I think if they're able and prepared to do so, absolutely. But mm -hmm. I also think it's okay if they don't want to. Yeah. So giving them the choice. Yes. Yeah, yes. I love that. Yeah. And I think that prepared, what would you, what do you think is prepared, helping prepare a child for a visitation or a funeral? I think letting them know that they're something wonderful, love them. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity to say, their goodbyes and that they love them as well and it's just an opportunity to embrace what is happening with the family as a community yeah and family yeah. or communities yes they are very much so yeah and and it's this opportunity for them to really feel a part of that mm -hmm. and and I think as adults, we have to decide where our boundaries are about that. You know, um, we're not going to give the whole funeral book to a child and say, you plan it, right? But mm -hmm. we, could, we could have a specific developmentally appropriate opportunity for them to participate in helping choose some flowers or writing something to them or drawing a picture and putting it in the casket or... Um, you know, being at the, um, at the visitation, but having uh, somewhere they can go during the visitation mm -hmm. if, if it gets too intense for them. Um, I've heard some people, I don't know if you've heard this, I've heard some people might bring a babysitter or maybe a friend of the families or something or a family member who would be assigned to that child. And so they are their go-to person. And so I've they can- yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's very good. Um, I, I think it gives them the opportunity to process. Mm -hmm. And if it becomes too intense, they could have someone that they really care about and know, guide them to another place within the services to get balanced. Yeah. To have yeah. some balance. Yep. 
and they might might just need to step away or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so then that feels better and it feels really safe for them. Children yes. often need that safety right after someone has died and especially during this moment of transition and ritual um, at the funeral or visitation. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I love that. Um, and we do suggest at Gilda's Club is to talk to your children openly and honestly. Um, not about gory details or things that are too much for them to handle, but, um, you know, they have lots of questions. Five-year-olds often are very practical people. We're just going to take them as an example, and they might take responsibility for what happened because often five-year-olds think they're in charge of the world, and sometimes they are, but not in those cases. And so, to helping them to understand that this is a part of the cycle of life and that mm-hmm. they didn't cause it. They didn't do something that made it happen or do something that didn't, didn't help someone stay safe or whatever the situation is. But being able to have that open conversation, being able to listen to them without judgment or trying to um, uh, you know, direct their I mean, we want to help them resolve if they feel like they're um, responsible, but um, they may have some ideas about where people go and what happens with them that might not jive with us as adults, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, but that um, it's important that they're able to speak those things out. Yes, very important. And it makes them feel connected. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about how brave my seven-year-old niece was at my mom's funeral that she played the song from Coco, (laughs) that movie Coco about um, wherever you go. And um, she played the piano for her. And it was just really beautiful and um, a lovely moment where we could... um, you know, open that up for her and how meaningful that is. She'll have that memory for a long time that she was able to participate in that ritual of the funeral. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, so it is really important. Okay, so you can practice that, you know, and you can also do that, like the book said, if you've had a pet that died, um, or maybe there's, Some people do that in um, developmental stages of their life when they end fifth grade and they're going into um, into the, you know, what is that middle school that they might have a funeral for their early childhood life or um, any transition times of our lives. You can also do that. Um, And I think it's really good. So, all right. Well, we do have a craft. Do you want to introduce the craft? You go right ahead, Melissa. All right. Okay. So sometimes, like um, Miss Tracy said, that we're maybe we're not able to get to the gravesite, or we're not, um, or it's you know there's five feet of snow out there, which often happens in Michigan, or for whatever reason. But you can have a space at home that gives you an opportunity to reflect, to be with, um, to interact with your something wonderful things, memories, those kinds of things. So we call them our memory boxes. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to share your memory box? I would love to share my memory box. This is my memory box. And my father enjoyed working with wood. So I purposely get a wooden box and in the boxes my father loved marbles so I have a marble I my father also gave me some really nice earrings and I still have them I have those in there and my father gave my mother a bracelet which she also gave to me that I have in there oh that's beautiful So I have these things in here and anytime I think about my father, I can just go in there and touch them and have very fond memories of who he was as a person and how he impacted me so greatly and positively. Um, So yeah, I really enjoy having my box. 
Oh, that's really cool. That's beautiful. I love that you were intentional about the kind of box too. Mm -hmm. And that represents one of your dad's um, skills and loves. Yes. Very cool. You want to share yours? I do. So, um, and I want to say that this box, I literally just found in my house. So I think somebody gave me this as a gift. And so um, I thought it was perfect. You can use a box like this or use something else you have at home. And so I just love the outdoors and my parents loved the outdoors and gardening and cooking. And so, um, so this box for me is just really perfect in that way. And so in it, I have a number of things. First of all, I have my dad's handkerchief. He always had a handkerchief in his pocket mm -hmm. and um, it's clean everyone. But, um, and so I just love to keep this around um, to think about that he, he carried this with him. He touched it. He had it mm -hmm. with him quite often. Um, and then my dad was also an artist. So I have a box inside my box, but he made me this box. And so um, nice. it's just got little representations of things in it and that are on it that it, it made him think of me, I guess, a little dachshund. My grandma had a dachshund um, named Schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> and then in it, I have my mother's um, rosary. Mm. And she... She prayed the rosary. Oh my goodness! Probably about twenty times a day. She it was it was a hobby of hers, and and she was always adding to her list of who to pray for. And um, so, with my mother, I have her glasses, and often I think about that how she saw the world, mm. and that I keep her glasses around to keep that perspective. And a picture of my family. And this is a very old picture because that's me. That's how young I was. And uh, I just love that picture. I think it's just kind of cool. It's a beautiful photograph. Thank you. And then um, I have a picture of my dog mm -hmm. who just recently died and then his collar. Mm -hmm. So I have all different kinds for obviously for different people. And um, so you too can make a memory box and um, it can be a box that like Miss Tracy, that is absolutely intentional. And maybe you get some help purchasing that if you're mm -hmm. a child um, or um, it can be a box that you found in your house like I did, or it could be even a uh, shoe box and you can decorate it and color it and cover it with stickers or whatever. Or maybe you need a big box. Some people need a big box or a trunk and you might have quite a few things in there and that's okay too. That's yes. all right too. Yeah. I in fact have a quilt somebody gave me that they made with my mother's um, shirts and that I keep downstairs. It's too big to put in this box. So I keep it downstairs and I use it. So you might have things around the house like that too, that just give you a moment of thought of them. That quilt must make you feel really warm when you have it wrapped around you. It does. It's pretty yeah. cool. It has a Gilda's Club t-shirt on it. Okay. Because <laughs> she loves Gilda's. <laughs> So, yeah, so you could do it so many ways. And I'm sure that you all have a lot of creative ideas about um, a memory box or memory quilt or visiting um, a grave site or even for a funeral. People do all kinds of really cool things nowadays for funerals. They're very different. And um, it's not always your traditional church and grave mm -hmm. site. Some people do some other things. And, and, uh, and, and there's no wrong way. That's right. Yes. I love that you said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is no wrong way. There mm -hmm. is only the way of the heart for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So all right. Well, I think that's everything we have. Do you have anything more, Miss Tracy? Um, no, I think we covered everything. I just want everyone to know that it is okay um, to have something from something wonderful. 
Yes, it is. That's really cool. Yes. All right. Well, I wanted you to know that we are holding a program here at Gilda's Club and we have, um, we're just dipping our toes back into the in-person world. And so we have a number of in-person meetings. We have a number of virtual meetings and we have a number of hybrid meetings that are both virtual and in-person at the same time. And um, we are accepting new members every day. We have new member meetings and we would love to talk with you if you're new on a grief or cancer journey and um, you'd like to get connected to our free support program. We have lots of opportunities for just connecting and you can see our uh, calendar on our website, gildasclubgr.org. And um, I think, oh, well, just one announcement that the week of Thanksgiving, our building will be closed that mm -hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So all programming will be closed so that we all can celebrate the holiday together and, um, and with our own, our, our own families yes. or communities, wherever you are. But know, please, that we are very grateful for all of you. Grateful that you're listening. Grateful that you're participating with us. I'm really grateful to you, Miss Tracy, for being with me today. And please don't forget all the number of workshops that we have. Oh, yeah. Do you want to say something? Is there one in particular you want to identify today? Um, no, not at this time. I just wanted the community to know that we have a number of workshops um, and we have something for everyone. Um, so yeah, check us out. I would agree. Thank you. That's awesome. So um, with that, I think that we'll end. Take care, everyone. Be well and enjoy this beautiful fall. And yes. we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, Miss Tracy.